today on my magical internet arts and crafts ship. Uh, <clears throat> can you take pink stuff, insulation foam, carve it, and then cast it? The answer is yes, <laughs> with some caveats. It's been a journey. Come join me. So I want to try a casting experiment. Uh, this is like a part two video. Um, I, uh, I I cut these guys out of um, insulation foam, the pink, pink insulation foam stuff. Uh, extruded polystyrene foam. I think that's what this is. I have looked on the internet. I can't really find anything. I found one uh, like little blog where they talk about casting materials. Uh, or like making molds out of different types of materials and I wanted to see if this stuff degassed some kind of weird stuff uh, that would screw up the um, the let's see uh, polyurethane mold or the um, well yeah long story short can't really find anything I'm just gonna experiment with it and then hope um, so what I did do was first I, um, I, I pumped it full of this stuff, this uh, fine pumice gel. I've been, I did a few coats on this guy. I think I did like three coats of this stuff and just so it would absorb as much medium and the kind of like little fine pumice stuff texture into the little cracks and stuff to give it that kind of like, uh, I guess it would be Roman concrete look. For this and um, well I think I'm gonna do go one more I'm gonna do one more step I'm gonna hit it with some uh, filler primer uh, got some 2-in-1 filler and, and primer and this stuff works on 3d printing like it fills in the mold lines with 3D printing, so it should fill in any other little tiny pores, and then I think it's sealed well enough with the medium that it's not gonna melt the foam insulation. So I'm gonna do that before I try and cast anything. So despite my best efforts uh, to seal these guys, there's, I can tell, there's so, like this, some of this stuff kind of melted a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I can still cast these guys. Um, and the, the Santa Pool, like the filler primer actually gives it a really cool looking texture. Like the, um, Definitely has like a stony kind of texture, and then this stuff will come off, you know, in the uh, it, like it, nothing's really gonna stick to this too much. Um, but you know, I was trying to get it into the little cracks, and sure enough, it seeped in there and kind of melted things a little bit. Um, so, when you are casting or when you're molding stuff like this, you cannot use clays that have sulfur in them, like Sculpey. You need to use a sulfur-free clay. Um, I, you know, I think you could use you could use like uh, putty stuff if you wanted to sculpt these, and then you know, like if you were hell bent on painting them after you um, cast them. But I think pretty much do or die for me at this point. I think I'm just gonna sculpt up some stuff with uh, the sulfur free clay. And uh, <laughs> we'll see like if um, if the mold fails, it fails. I'll just, I'll just have to sculpt a new one. So, all right. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to grab a piece of glass. All right, so first off, <laughs> these, so these guys are just some little, uh, these are like, I don't know, like they're, they're acrylic. There were like some little stands or something. They, there was an, a gallery, an art gallery that I used to show at. And then these, like the gallery closed and then these were in the storage in the back of the gallery. So I took them just for, well, for stuff like this, for molding and casting. 
Um, <clears throat> so I have some different sizes. And then, yeah, that's about right. Just to make my job a little bit easier when I cast stuff like this. Try and leave like a half inch on each side with stuff like this with big um, big pieces because the mold you know it has more places to fail it's not as quite as important like in between but around the edges it's nice to have like a half inch clearance on your mold so yeah. So I went ahead and went around and kind of filled in all of the, the boo-boos, all the areas where the, um, the primer kind of melted the foam. Uh, and I actually had some trouble getting the, uh, the clay to like stick to the, <laughs> to the primer in some areas, which is a good sign. Um, but you know, even though this stuff is like really sticky, um, it will not stick to silicone. Uh, you can use this stuff to make molds with. Like, I know that for a fact. The part that I don't know that I'm worried about is this degassing and creating bubbles in the mold. And you can easily texture the um, the clay as well. Just you know, it's it's clay, so it's it's easier to texture than the foam is. Uh, But anyways, yeah, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to make a, uh, a mold box out of this, uh, this piece of, um, plexiglass here and, uh, <clears throat> uh I'm going to do a dump mold on top of the, the piece. And the, the, where I did most of the work was around here, around the, the feet. Because I wanted to, um, <clears throat> uh, I wanted this piece. This we're gonna dump in the the our molding material like plaster or resin or whatever this way. So this area will be flat. That will level off. So I wanted those to have. I wanted it to have nice flat feet down there. So and I think I'm just gonna cast this one <laughs> as an experiment first before I try and cast the other one um, so yeah time to heat up the hot glue gun To mix this stuff up, um, I'm using this uh, amazing mold rubber stuff. Uh, I get this stuff at Hobby Lobby. There's, uh, I like Target, and there's a 
There's a Hobby Lobby that's right next door to the Target that I like to go to. Get my hair cut over there, just all in one, uh, one stop. Um, <laughs> but this stuff, the nice thing about Hobby Lobby is that they always have those 40% off coupons that you can use. Um, and, you know, this is, this is going to be an expensive puddle if this mold fails. So I have the, uh, I have the hot glue gun over here ready just in case to, you know, uh, get in there. And, uh, and I did use a lot of hot glue as well. Uh, I'd rather waste a glue stick than a whole tub of this, um, mold rubber stuff. Cause this stuff, like the, even with the coupon, uh, it's still like, I don't know, $16 for, uh, a jar of this and um, but I, another thing that I do uh, is I, I have uh, pieces of um, uh, old uh, molds and then I'll just cut them up and then uh, I so you don't want to just dump them in there because they could uh, like sort of get stuck somewhere and kind of obscure the detail of the mold you know but what you can do is Pour in some first and then like kind of sprinkle these guys around uh, and I don't even cut them up like too fine just like fine enough to like you know get get in the cracks um, you know just like with a pair of scissors just like that just cut them up a little bit so that they're uh, you know small enough chunks to kind of fill in the little cracks uh, so yeah, we're uh, we're ready to cast. Fingers crossed. This whole thing, yeah. We'll see. Could be a lot of time, effort, and a little bit of cash wasted. All right, so I filled up the mold most of the way, um, and then I, so there's, you know, like a half inch close to it, you know, around on, on all sides. Um, <clears throat> and then I ended up chopping up some of those little, the used pieces of silicone a little bit, the, a little bit finer, and then kind of sprinkling them in and then pushing them down. And, and I was able to fill up this cavity with some bigger pieces, you know, some bigger chunks of the used silicone. So didn't have to use quite as much silicone to cast this. Um, but now I'm gonna do a trick where I'll put it in the fridge and I'll let it cure for like 24 hours. Um, <clears throat> and it just gives the, uh, the air bubbles a chance to rise to the surface. So you have less air bubbles on your parts uh, for your final um, molds. But uh, yeah, I'm going to let this sit for uh, 24 hours now. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> um, I actually ended up leaving this for, you know, like a few days. Um, but this is, things are looking good. Um, <clears throat> so for one thing, the, the little chunks, they did kind of sink in a little bit. I see like some little you know, little teeny tiny air bubbles on the surface, but I mean, like nothing, well, yeah, a few, a few little air bubbles on the sides, you know? Um, but the bottom, everything looks totally cured. Um, like it looks good. I, 
can't really tell 100%. But yeah, moment of truth. Time to demold this sucker and then see if it actually casts. Uh, <clears throat> Drum roll. Okay. That was dumb. That was a dumb idea. Don't do that. Alright, that was nuts. Um, this thing worked like a charm, uh, the, the piece of plexiglass, um, but like I, I had to break both of the pieces of glass to get them off. Like this one snapped when I was pulling it this way, and then this one, it was like I couldn't get it off. I ended up just like smashing it and then pulling away the pieces. And like this, it, it might look like the, um, some of the stuff on the bottom like didn't fully cure, but it totally cured. It's just uh, the pulling it away from the glass. Like I've never left it that long on, um, I mean, it looks like it's pulling away from the, the foam just fine. Uh, I've never left it that long to cure on a piece of glass. So I've never had that problem before, but it was like, it was super glued on there. Like maybe just when you leave the, uh, silicone on glass for a really long time it makes like it bonds to it like at the molecular level or something like it felt like super glue but anyways uh it's time for the fun part um <laughs> so what i'm gonna do is to demold this part is i'm gonna make uh like little kind of zigzag cuts And I'm not worried about destroying this, the part now either. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, slowly carve in here. And uh, so, that, so when you, when you re, when you sort of uh, let the piece loose, when you're recasting it, you can just um, let it slip together and it will key up perfectly like that. That's that's why you wanna make uh, kind of like zigzag cuts when you're demolding with a dump mold like this. All right. Alright, uh, I got it out, broke in multiple pieces, this top part broke, and then this piece was stuck in there really good. So I ended up um, going in there and I used a little bit of acetone, because the acetone apparently, you know, it, it does melt insulation foam, I know that for sure, but apparently it doesn't melt silicone. So, learn something new every day, but there we go. There's still some primer and stuff in there, uh, and then like, uh, I mean, it'll it'll paint up just fine. But the the final moment of truth is going to be whether it casts okay and what it looks like. I mean, everything looks good. It looks like it's got some great texture. The mold looks like. I mean, I guess we're just going to have to try it and then see. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to mix up some plaster and then cast it. And then, uh, and then I ended up I had to put some extra slits on the side because things just didn't want to come out. So this might have more seam lines than I would like. I'm starting to wish that I 
I, I, I really do wish that I had done a, um, uh, a two-part mold, but the thing is, is that using the plastilina clay, I was, I was sculpting with the plastilina, and then, you know, like, I, you can't, you can't, can't do both. You can't sculpt with the plastilina and make a mold out of it. You can do one or the other. So, all right, time to mix some plaster. Pour this guy. Okay, mix up some plaster. Uh, I'm using a, um, <clears throat> a casting plaster, which is really tough. This is more like a dental stone plaster. Um, yeah, perfect cast. It's really tough, really durable stuff. Um, and then my plaster is kind of like, well, might want a little thicker than that. Uh, I like to say like, kind of like cement consistency. Uh, it's about the right consistency. There we go. And then I, um, I pop some rubber bands on this guy and then I kind of like wind everything up so that the, uh, you know, so that the seams like hopefully don't get as many seam lines, especially on the outside. It doesn't matter quite as much on this side. That's supposed to be hidden. It doesn't matter as much on the bottom. You know, it's mostly, you're mostly looking at it this way or this way from the top down, but still like it saves me some cleanup time, etc. so close just need a little more oh I have other molds that I want to cast too some people say don't do this don't put rubber bands on the sides of your molds because you can force them to like squeeze funny you know, so that you create seam lines instead of preventing the seam lines by like squeezing them together. But I feel like if you have a good solid, you know, like half inch, quarter inch at least on the sides of your of your mold, you're fine. Um, as long as you have a solid mold, I think that's that's more important than. Uh, you know, worrying about deforming the mold with like rubber bands. Okay, so <clears throat> I was in here kind of late last night and I didn't want to shoot because it was really dark. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I went ahead and pulled this guy out and check it out. Like, okay, look at the, look at it like from the top down, how it's supposed to be viewed. You know, here's the sides. You do have some seam lines, right? This one, this side, not so, not so much. Very, very hard to see. Oh, okay. So I did. So I knocked them down. I, I took it out when it was um, like still slightly wet, like a little bit, like wet enough where I could run my fingernail across it and kind of like leave a mark. Uh, and then I hit it with the wire brush. Uh, but I left this side kind of like just to show you the seam lines and I left these seam lines on the bottom. So I'm not really entirely sure what happened here. I'm, I think I'm going to try putting more rubber bands further down. I think that I had rubber bands up here and here on the mold, but not maybe not so much down here. But you can see that they just kind of break off and then like like that. And then I can hit them with the wire brush. And you can still, like there's some air bubbles too down there. But I mean, once again, you know, this is like supposed to be like a distressed stone wall. Um, so. <clears throat> like a 
if I take a, a hobby file and just go in there and knock those down really easily. They're just, I mean, they're, they're su super, super soft. Like I'm not even applying any pressure. That's just, it's just knocking that down like that. And it's still pretty soft. Like you, you could still texture this, uh, like um, plaster, you know, yeah, it goes without saying it's softer than plastic. Um, you could you could go in with the wire brush, kind of retexture things. Um, like you you lose a little bit of the the detail, some of the fidelity, you know, in the casting process. Like um, if you want to re retexture your stone, or like I had some some pieces of um, like there's little bits of the the uh, extruded polystyrene, the, the insulation foam that was in here at the top because I couldn't get it all out, you know, and it came out with, like, with the, um, the plaster, and it'll keep doing that, like, I didn't get it all out, um, yeah, most of it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's still, like, a little, some little teeny tiny bits left in there, and it's fine, you know, it just adds a little bit of extra stone texture it'll keep coming out of there for a while as i'm casting these <clears throat> but i just went over that with the wire brush to kind of pull those pieces out uh like you can see on the top you can see the pink stuff um the pink stuff in there is the insulation foam and then you can see some of the primer this is there in the in the plaster as well but I can still like I can go in and kind of retexture things with the with the wire brush, and uh, but like if you look at this pretty close, you can see that the the striations, the, the the texturing that I did put in there on top of these stones is pretty much gone. Like that's just that was just lost in the casting process. Um, but I'm pretty blown away by how much detail it did keep. I mean the it did a really good job. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna reprime this guy. Like I, I, I'm kind of torn. <laughs> like I like the idea of, um, I like the idea of just slopping paint onto plaster because it just sort of soaks it up, you know, like um, like a sponge. I mean, it's like the <clears throat> this stuff is like bone dry, and it just it, it wants paint, and then the paint will actually seal it too. You know, like um, you don't need to put primer on something like this. You don't need to put primer on plaster to paint it. I mean, it's it it wants to soak up paint. But at the same time, I kind of, I really like this kind of texturing effect that I got from this primer. Mm. No, I'm just gonna paint it. Um. <clears throat> Made up my mind. Um. But yeah, the, uh, I'm super happy. I, you know, this was an experiment. I had never tried to cast um, pink stuff before, insulation foam. Um, see, I'm just going in here and I'm kind of redefining these little brick um, edges. Yeah, I had never tried to cast insulation foam before. I didn't know if you could do it. I, I was worried about it degassing like into the mold and making bubbles in the mold. Um, like there, there are some kind of like bubble spots, but I think that was just from the casting. I don't think that that was from the, um, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> like you could use like a flow aid, like a, like dish, dish detergent or the stuff that you put in the dishwasher, like jet dry to, in your mold and that'll help. Or even, um, if you take like talcum powder and put it in the mold, um, then that will, um, 
uh, that'll have a hydroscopic effect and it'll pull, it'll pull the plaster into the little cracks. Like, or if you take like, um, just anything, any kind of like powdery, like cornstarch or something like that and put it in the, um, in the mold itself, like in the little cracks, it'll pull it in there. It'll, but I mean, it's, it's supposed to be stone, you know? So it's like, if there is a little air, air bubble, you just kind of hit it like that, you know? See, that's stone. All right, well, yeah, successful uh, experiment. So what did I learn on um, my takeaways from this? Uh, okay, first off, if I did it again, I would use a primer, I would use like a, a surface primer, like I would either airbrush it, uh, because the, the rattle cam primer definitely melts styrofoam. And I kind of knew that, but I don't know. I, I wanted to see if I could seal it with the, the pumice gel stuff. Um, but yeah, I would use a, a, a like a brush on or airbrush surface primer. Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to, I think I would do a two part mold too. Um, and the plastilina clay, it never cures. It's perfect for mold making. You just, you know, you make a seam, you make two, two, a two part mold uh, that keys together that has the same effect as this key together. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and then you can even do, you know, do like a two part mold where you pour in from the top and have like take like drinking straws and then make little vents. And there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with mold making. Um, it just, it was really, really hard to get this out. Way, way harder than I thought it was doing a dump mold. And then, uh, yeah, the, I mean, otherwise this is a, a total success. So, you know, you can, you can totally do it. You can totally cast. You can carve pink stuff and make something and then cast it, which is cool. I'm gonna do more of it. Um, yeah. All right, thanks for watching. Oh, and use plexiglass. Plexiglass, not glass. <laughs>